Hello, you beautiful people. Man, it's good to have you here. I'm glad to be here today. I got the greatest opportunity to meet one of my favorite artists. And I got it because I was staying in this hotel and I admired the guy's work and just really thought so much of him. So anyway, his name is David Santiago. And he's this young cat out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And he calls himself a contemporary charcoal artist, which is not, to me, it's like it, it's so not expressive of enough of what he does. Like he is beautiful, subtle, unique, this mesmerizing work, these beautiful women that he paints and that he draws. And, and uh, I had to buy a piece. And so, man, I, I, I posted a picture on my Instagram. You can see the picture there. And I was like, I need to take this chick home with me. And it's this wonderful, wonderful piece that then a buddy of his, Bobby Beals, who represents his work, um, hit him up and, and or hit me up and said, hey, dude, you got to meet David and, and we'd love to set something up with work. And I was like, awesome, let's do that. So anyway, Bobby is, uh, he owns Beals and Company, um, which is like uh, this wonderful like he, he has all these artists that are all from all different kinds of variant backgrounds and beautiful, beautiful artwork that he represents and then he puts in different hotels and, and around the place. So he's a great representative for artists. So anyway, without any further ado, I got my man here, uh, David Santiago, and we had the most wonderful little chat. It was short, like half hour, 40 minutes or something. But man, it's just so cool to connect with all these people and I'm so grateful to be able to have an ability to share it with everybody and to be out here with you guys and and it's really been so great so thank you very much for listening i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed last week's with carlos and mike dolce and um yeah man so here we go here's the next installation of pirate life radio david santiago the big tate fletcher powerful tate fletcher is a, is a real alpha male weight lifter he's a stuntman movie star robust enthusiastic individual he's huge by the way he's like a monster person one of the sweetest guys i know he's bigger than life actor entrepreneur a fighter the jiu-jitsu technician he's also bald and he has all these tattoos he's just a big fucking man uh, a man a myth a legend you tate, tate fletcher tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. What's up, Tate Fletcher, you bad Fletcher. motherfucker? Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher is Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher. Teddy bear. Motherfucking Fletcher, ladies and gentlemen. That's Tate Fletcher, everybody. The great <laughs> Tate Fletcher. Tate the animal Fletcher. Tate the savage Fletcher. Always moving. There's no stillness with Tate Fletcher. You will find no dust. Tate Fletcher's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. He just said the word erection. Tate Fletcher. Tate Fletcher's in the fucking house. Tate Fletcher! Tate really blasts out some serious hardcore truth bombs, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Hold on, turn up at my right. It is. Turn up at my right. All think, right. You got it? We're good. Okay. Check. All right. Try to catch the beat. Well, it's exciting to meet you, man. Um, and it's weird to have a conversation this way for the first time you meet somebody, but here it's we are. It's kind of cool. I think more conversations just should start off like this, yeah. which is a mic. And you don't with, know if it's on. And with caffeine. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to turn agree. it on eventually. Um, the uh, world famous David Santiago. Oh, stop. So uh, <laughs> I really was enamored with your stuff. And then Lacey saw your stuff and was uh, super stoked about it and had a piece uh, that got taken back from her at a certain point. She was, I think, stolen yeah. from. But... Um, you know who stole and it? And then she know. She, I, I admired your piece. She's like, oh, I know this guy. He's on Instagram. I have an ex-boyfriend that gave me a piece of work that then took it back what? when we broke up. Yeah. M right. Martyr of St. Cecile. You remember that one? I'll Maybe? have to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's great. I'll take care of it. Just so, no, no, name, that, address. That's a hilarious and story. I love that. And I was so psyched. We, the beer can like brought me back to your Instagram that mm -hmm. David brought in from Tractor. Um, there was a beer can that you did that was really cool and I was like I know that work and then I found you on Instagram again and then Tate was like oh look at this stuff and I was like yes I've been following him again so well thank you yes. and so then Big Bobby got a hold of me yeah and was like yeah let's do this and, and then he said he talked about the tractor can and talked about you doing a can uh, you know like here's our cans now for Caveman um, and doing a rap or I was like yeah whatever any of it but it's so cool uh like everything that we've done and like with the podcast and with this company and with whatever it's all been like really about um uh 
you know, New Mexico and like all, mm-hmm. all the talent that's in New Mexico. Definitely. And, um, you know, it's, uh, how long have you been in the art community here and where did that all begin? And right behind you is a camera. <clears throat> it's almost a hard question to ask. I feel like, uh, like since you're a little kid, you've been enamored with it or well, I feel like it's a very cliche answer to say that, you know, you've been drawing since you're a little, but no, you know, I've been, I've, what the best answer I ever heard from a fighter who was like, they're like, how do you go for a five round fight from a three round fight? How long do you, how, what, what's your camp like? How long is your, he's like, your whole athletic life yeah. is for that. Like, and so like that, I mean, I think it's a great answer because yeah. like the pressures that you learn and the layers that you create, I think exactly speaks into the volume of the person that becomes mm-hmm. that you're looking at now. And everybody then belittles that work of art that you stand before mm-hmm. them and goes oh well they're just talented or they're just like as yeah. opposed to no fuck i spent everything yeah. doing this everything thing. that they've done up to that point has led to that yeah piece at that exact time exactly what was your were you one of these kids that was just always drawing in class and doodling in the back of uh literature class or what uh yeah if i wasn't sleeping in class i was probably drawing uh, yeah. in my sketchbook but uh uh, yeah, I mean, my mom would tell me even when I was little, you know, we'd go out to eat and they'd give us the coloring books and I would flip it over to the blank page and just draw my own picture and just do it that way. So I think I've always, I don't know, I found a way to just kind of, uh, build my own things or create my own things and just, uh, it's just kind of always been, uh, in, in the back of my mind, I guess. So I actually stopped for a long time. Um, I think a lot of creatives have this, uh, kind of this, they get in this funk maybe where they have the energy, this creative energy, and they want to do something, but they don't know what to do. You might like sit down at a table with all your supplies and you're ready to go, but you just, nothing quite comes out. And I think that block is sometimes a really hard thing to overcome. Um, for me, I, was, I think I was able to overcome that. Um, I studied architecture at UNM, so right. I think having a pencil in my hand every day and just drawing kind of re-sparked that passion, um, that drawing passion that I had. And so, Does it matter what the thing is that, that you're drawing just as long as that you're in the process of drawing? in the motion of it i mean it, like in those times when there's like no inspiration or creative impulse per se do you think there's still value in whatever it is that you're in in the discipline i guess as it were uh and the to habitualize that every day i'm going to draw something well i think uh i mean in that instance anytime that you have your pencil to the paper there's it's always creative no matter no matter what you're doing uh, whether you're drawing, whether you're you know writing, whether you're creating poetry, so I think it's always going to c- be creative. Maybe not the way you want it to come out per se, but um, I think that's just gonna that's just what's going to happen. That's going to be the end result. Um, but yeah, yeah. So uh, did you get a degree? Yes, yeah, so I have my undergrad in architecture. Really? Um, and uh, did you ever use it? I mean, I wouldn't say that I use it in the architect? in the form of architecture in that in that fashion but um you know just going through that program they expand your mind so much and they make you think about all these decisions that you make and everything is a conscious choice and you have to be able to explain your work to people um so you're always thinking you know you're coming up with these concepts you're coming up with these themes um so everything has that kind of that foundation that backbone and even so, as far as empty space versus like what, what exactly part, composition all of that everything stuff, yeah. it's got to be a huge part of architecture yeah so i mean architecture to me is art artwork for sure um you know you can create these different emotions and people just does how, it make you sad when you see tract housing Oh my gosh! Yeah. I mean, I, I, when I look at like I grew up in Michigan, and you drive through Detroit and you look at this architecture, and you're like, "Never again will that happen." Yeah, you, you know, a giant and, uh, cookie cutter and just God, and then it just becomes crazy. Mm-hmm. All this, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, there have been newer developments, and you know, just driving around Albuquerque, it seems like there's more things starting to pop up now where there's uh, you know there's more creative input, and they're just thinking about like what they're creating these spaces, and which has been really awesome. Because that's what I think Albuquerque needs. Um, like a lot of the lofts, like at the school, where they turn that all into a part. Like exactly. I think stuff like that is cool. Like mm-hmm. this uh, reutilization of these mm-hmm. old buildings that are like, what are we going to do with that building? And somebody goes, you know what? This would be awesome. And I'll cut it up into eight different apartments or whatever exactly. it is. Yeah, and you create all these multi-purpose spaces that yeah. can be used for, and just and, you know, it's going to draw a lot more people in that area. You're going to create um, just more work for people uh, that can, you know, if you do like live work, then you can. Uh, Come over there and have your have, set up your creative space over there. Did you ever imagine <clears throat> that you'd make money from art? Like when you're just drawing. Like when mm-hmm. when was the first time when you're like, oh, this is a job that people have. Uh, well, I wouldn't say necessarily make uh, like money from it, but I look at it look at it as like supporting myself and be able to like by doing it, I can 
you know, it'll pay the bills and it'll pay for my art supplies so I can keep doing it. It's kind of that never-ending cycle. I would so, imagine this is the kind of thing that you would do regardless if it paid you any money or not. I would like to, yeah. I mean, I was working at, uh, I was a server for a while and I was able to, uh, you know, slowly balance those hours and kind of work my way out. But I mean, yeah. it's it's hard and just doing that job, it just drains your energy. Being a waiter or, or, yeah. or a bartender uh-huh. or whatever, yeah. And, uh at the same time, it also gives you the fuel to want to get out of there, you For know? Sure. And you so let that burn if I could give bit. some advice, it'd be, uh, maybe being a server do some shit <laughs> for a little hate. bit while. Cause yeah, yeah, I swear working <clears throat> in a nightclub, being a bouncer, being in it, like do some shit like that. That's some thankless shit that yeah. is necessary that it, you're treated in a certain kind of way and you know, all that it's it's yeah it's gonna super be super important mm-hmm. to really loathe what it is that you're doing while you're not doing the thing you love exactly and then you know and then the whole time <laughs> you're there you're like okay i'm gonna get home i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this you have all the energy while you're at work and you get home and you're just burnt out yeah and then that creative energy is gone and so right and that's tough. the worst probably sitting in front of a blank page under that yeah. kind of you're like i'm not gonna yeah yeah it's no no good no or fun. do you promise yourself i would be like I'll get up at six in the morning. I'll get up early tomorrow and I'll draw that or I would make myself all kinds of deals that I wouldn't follow through with probably. Yeah, I do that too. Uh, I mean, I've tried to get better at time management in that way and I've gotten um, those yellow notepads and every single day now I'll just, you know, start down exactly what time I start writing. Um, on the pad, okay, it's 12 p.m. right now. So 12, this next hour I'll do this, this next hour I'll do this. Yep. And that's kind of helped me planning the day of, but trying to plan you know a week two weeks sometimes for me is is hard and i, I think the best thing is to maybe just try to max out on your week schedule and then just focus on your day schedule fuck i practice yeah just let me get the day done i just I, i'm not good at put, putting a week together but i can fill up a day really well and, I, and i'm like i'll cram it full of stuff but i can't tell you what i'm going to do tomorrow at noon like, yeah i don't have any idea yeah yeah i think uh that's definitely uh been something I need to overcome and work on. And I, I feel like I've gotten better at it. And I think you start to see a lot more um, personal uh, results and gains uh, when you start to manage yourself that way and just kind of break down your day. Otherwise, you're just going to be going back and forth. Like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I right. got to do this. And you're, you're just not going to get anything done. I'm looking with a deeper admiration <clears throat> at people that I see that discipline their day and are like very regimented and scheduled in their day. I'm like, that's a discipline that I need to exact more in my life. Like I know that I'd be more useful to myself and others if I had that. Yeah. But it's something I need to, it's just a weak muscle for me. I just haven't yeah. trained it very much. It's hard. I mean, it's easy just to do nothing, just relax and, but or, you got to Or to fill it up and do, you know, but you, my, my mom would be like, you want to clean the house? Then pick up a pair of socks and then don't touch them again. Meaning put them where they go or put them in the laundry or whatever. But like, it's, you've solved it. Yeah. Whereas I pick up the socks and then I put them on the bed and then I pick up the socks again and I put them on the floor. Then I pick up the socks and I throw them on the chair. And it's like, don't touch things so much. Touch it, uh-huh. have an exact idea that what you want to do with it, and then go on from there. Like, I don't have that discipline. I just, and then I do a lot of stuff, but it's not with uh, the force of direction that it needs to be for my liking anyway, right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a, uh, you just got to, uh, you just got to figure out and just know what you got to do next and just, and just to try not to overwhelm, overwhelm yourself, you know. Do you ever um, work with different mediums or are you always. You do a lot of charcoals, you work with acrylics, or do you work uh, mainly, is there mainly one medium that you work in? Or I mainly use charcoal and pastel, uh-huh. and um, that actually, uh, I discovered using it in the class at UNM for my architecture degree, and that what that class was, it was a graphics class um, with an awesome teacher, his name Steve Borbis. Um, and what he would do is he would change the medium on us every week. So we'd go out and we'd do line, uh, line drawings of architecture. And then, you know, next week we'd come and do um, like an ink wash over that. Next week we'd do this, you know. So he was always changing it. And one week we were going to be doing uh, figure drawing and portraits, which is what I was always interested in. And, but we were going to be using charcoal. And so I wasn't really looking forward to the class. And I even just went to like the bookstore and got really cheap stuff. Right. And I was like, all right, let's just get this over with. And it was one of those light light bulb moments when, you know, you just, it just blended exactly the way that I had <laughs> thought was possible, but I'd never really been able to achieve with uh, any other medium. So I was working with, uh, you know, acrylic and colored pencils, had it dabbed in oil a little bit. Um, but yeah, just nothing quite could get that texture and that, that, uh, that gradient that I wanted, that charcoal just that had. And it was fun because it was like messy. It, it was, uh, you know, it was it like a love hate. It makes a little hate. 3D almost. You yeah, know, it gives you know, a lot of depth. the raised texture of it, and you can feel that a lot off the page. Well, and it's just so rich. The black is just like, you almost kind of just get lost sometimes just staring into the black part of, uh, yeah. you know, if it's just, uh, and, it, and it blends really well, so I can get, you know, uh, smooth, uh, solid tones of, you know, rich black. 
my mom is an artist and she does a lot of charcoal and and figured like that's one of her things that mm -hmm. she loves doing and that and abstract stuff but it's always interesting like when artist uh veers to one or the other do you ever do like com you ever, computer enhanced stuff or anything like that or any drawings in that way or is that a whole different i think that's a whole different uh, i mean and those artists are crazy just the like if you watch um just some of them will post their time lapse videos on uh, on youtube and right. it's just ridiculous how many layers there are it's just uh, i would I get lost imagine. i think too and just the you can go in an infinite number of mm -hmm. directions and it's like no, you have to choose. Yeah, you have to choose a direction. Yeah, I think that's the nice thing about you know the physical uh, physicality of the of artwork that I do is that instead of, compared to digital is that it can and you know you can only work it so much physically I feel right. like and then it has to kind of stop. Right. Whereas digital, you know, you can always just keep adding more erasing and you know just it is endless. It's endless, and then the, the, I mean filtrations and like all of that it becomes yeah. a. Uh, I I almost feel like there's a madness in it mm -hmm. that is that endless kind of madness of someone was talking about um, uh you know the difference with like artists and regular people is that they know when to stop yeah and like that idea of having an end point and going oh no i could tweak this or like tweak. at a certain point uh does perfectionism lend to your ability or inability to be able to finish a project well, i think all artists maybe struggle with that idea of perf, uh, trying to perfect everything, and you want everything because I mean you kind of that's, so how do that's you know you, who you are. Well, for me, I don't know it's it's hard. I think the best thing you can do is stop. You know, it's just stop before you think you get, you always feel like you can add something new. You can add a little bit, a little bit of this, and it'll make the piece better. Um, and so that that hard part is just you know standing back and then just just talking yourself into stopping almost. Um, for me it helps with my clear coat that I put on it because after I put that, uh, that high gloss finish on it, you know, I can't add anything else to it. So it's right. finished. It's sealed. It's, you know, it's, I, it. there's nothing I can Whether do. Whether you've it. chosen or not, yeah. I, that's a wrap. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's over when that final, uh, that final pour is on, which is kind of, uh, it's, it's a nice feeling for me. Do you do anything mechanical as far as, and by mechanical, I mean like go, I'm going to put 48 hours in between when I've done the last little bit and, and put that coat on or do you know what i mean do you do you, like with writing sometimes i'll go okay i'm gonna put a day between the time i write this and the time i send it or whatever and, and then i'm gonna edit it and make sure that I, I like all the little nuances and yeah i think i think the whole entire process of start to finish is all is like i mean what consists editing. of all these little times yeah like you got this time to do this you got this time to do this and for me i like to work on a lot of pieces at once so i'm not you're not really? coming back to everything with a fresh eye so i don't i mean if you just stare at it too long you're just gonna you're gonna look at it and you're not gonna see i think what you should be seeing um i think also from for me what helps is i'll sometimes take the piece and i'll hold it up to a mirror or i'll take a picture of it and i'll flip it on my phone just so i can see you know the reverse image of it to see you know what a fresh eye if they're just coming to it what they right. might see um so that helps me a lot, um, but what you're what you're saying is yeah everything is kind of chunked in a different time. So I'll work on this. Uh, I'll do the base layer, you know, for I'll work that for a few hours, and maybe I'll start you know a foundation layer on another piece and work that for a few hours, and just try to stay in that momentum in that zone for a bit. And then next I'll go into like a detailing layer. So I'll do that for a bit on this piece, and then I'll work on that on this other piece, just so my mind is in that uh, that state. Do you, Do you have ideas when you're like? Um is it more like a figure based or is it an idea that you're uh that you're looking at like and what i mean is like is this a feeling i'm trying to convey or is it because your images are beautiful but like is this like then does that become like i want to convey a feeling or i want to get a, a a certain image of beauty here or, or like what what do you think about because like i would think if it was idea based it'd be tough to go from one project to the next well i think you can include all that that you can have an like an overall idea that you want to convey and an overall feeling that you want to convey um sometimes you know it'll the piece will turn out totally different than what you ha the, what the original idea was and for me i'll i think the kind of the underlying theme of all my pieces is just the silent language of uh what is body language and how you can stare at someone and you know just these slight like the pieces aren't going to talk back to you but they might have right. you know subtle um, like just this little squint or the lips are just perked a little bit in the corners, you know, and what is that? How does that make you feel like right. you, you, like when you're interacting with someone, you can There's catch up on these. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. Art pieces for sure. I mean, so, 
you can sit and stare for mm-hmm. I used to get high as fuck. Yeah. And I would just sit and I would sit in my mom's studio and I would just look and it became like watching TV mm-hmm. or like watching a movie. I was and all the different and then I would, you know, micro compartmentalize each section of it and I would just get lost in like just this corner for mm-hmm. a second. Or then just you know, and it was all different stories that were yeah. in there. Yeah. And that's such such a cool thing is that I think when artists make something that if you allow the space and the patience as a viewer, you can get interactive with that in a different way than you thought was possible, maybe. And that yeah. kind of doesn't make sense because uh-huh. you're looking at this thing, mm-hmm. but you're having a, a moment activity yeah, with yeah. it. Yeah. And that's because, I mean, I will, I'll look at something and I'll feel something different and then someone else will come look at it and they'll totally get a different emotion from that person. Right. Or they'll see someone they know in it, which is a neat, right. you know, when they, when they recognize someone and they'll take and a picture of it. And they'll send it a whole yeah, yeah. different way. Mm-hmm. So... I think do, you, for, do you use any of these images <clears throat> off of people, off of actual models that you know, or some yes, some no? Uh, yeah, so I've done some model work, and then I've done some, uh, I'll do work in my sketchbook a lot. So I like to come up with a character, and then I'll work with that character for a while and see uh, how many variations I can do with that specific face or that pose or that look. Right. Um, you know, just with the cropping of the image, the different compositions I can do, different colors, different, just everything. Um, and just like really work. Uh, that idea for a while. Do you ever think of like a graphic novel or like a, having a whole story? Like, you know, you have these ideas and so you start five pieces and they're all kind of with a similar idea or a similar vein that strings them together. Do you ever think, well, I'll just go ahead and there's a whole storyline where all these characters fit together? It's possible. Um, I might have to leave that back to my squiggle days in like fourth grade. Is that right? That was, uh, that's what I did. Is she'd come every week and she'd draw squiggle and I linked mine. And everybody else would do like a different story, but I linked mine and made like an entire story through the whole year. So that, that was awesome. kind of a, that was fun. But I don't know. I've never actually really thought about that. It'd be cool to create a character that maybe just evolves from piece to piece. It's the same person, but this is how she changes over time. Yep. And just do like different series um, and just focus on that one individual for, you know, rad. the you length of childhood pieces. childhood series. Like here's a children's book of how they went through this. And yeah. I, 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 yeah, that'd be intense. That's just take a different, you know, that'd take a different uh, outlook entirely. You right. have to approach a project differently. So do you have ga- <clears throat> a gallery that you work with or was that the goal? Like when you started making paintings and you're like, okay, I've got some bodies of work now. And like we're out. Uh, you know, was it personal or was it always something that you wanted to show? Because a lot of artists are like super personal. And they're like, no, I just do this because it's for me. Well, it, I mean, I think they all are in a yeah. certain degree. But then at a certain point, you have to be kind of a exhibitionist, right? Because this is your heart that mm-hmm. I'm going to then put under the scrutiny yeah. of eyes. Yeah. Um, I think um, all people have that emotional attachment with their artwork uh, in that way. But uh, and you, it is personal. So you, it's kind of a. I mean, you're there along for the whole process of that creation. So in that way, you are the most like intimate with it. Um, for me, when I first started posting, uh, it wasn't necessarily like, all right, I'm here. I want to like get in a gallery and do this stuff. Right. And that might be like a, like a goal. I mean, you want your work out there. You want people to see it. And uh, you just, I mean, it's a neat feeling when people respond to your work and they like it. Sure. And so I think that's when I first really started uh, publishing work more publicly is I posted a few old drawings that I had on Facebook and started getting a few likes and people would comment on it and it was really cool and so I was like okay maybe I can just draw another piece it's a cool thing about Facebook Twitter and all that right where it's like then it's interactive you're like "Mm, fuck it I'll just put this up here and it's kind of like maybe it's like an archival idea or something and then you're like wow this per- and then you're having yeah. conversations with other people and those ideas come in i, th- I mean exactly your the gallery, way we're connected is uh-huh. really neat your right gallery's now. in your pocket yeah. yeah 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 you can reach out to you know anybody across the world just with a push What's of the, the most easily uh what do you utilize as a, a medium in that way the most right now like instagram i use I instagram imagine. yeah and uh my friend daniel is the one that introduced me to it in class uh unm and I, had no, I saw him just like scrolling through like all these really cool artists and liking their pictures. I had no idea what the app was. I was like, right. it looks cool when he like touches it twice and there's a heart that pops right. up. I was like, that's right. a sweet app. Right. So I downloaded it. It didn't nice do anything it's with all it, about, yeah. Everybody's like, oh, I want a dislike button or whatever, yeah. you know, for a while. On, and that was a big, but it's like, no, it's cool because it's all just formulated on love. Yeah. I'm like, this is, it's all just real positive, mm-hmm. you know, or yeah. it can be. Yeah, I agree. Um, and what's neat about it is that, I mean, for artists, you get to, see who they are behind their artwork which is neat right and you kind of can see their see the process as like the behind the scenes is the coolest thing for me like whenever i right. find a new artist i always try to look for you know how did this piece come to life and what materials did they use yeah. and so i think that that part of instagram is really cool for me as an artist and looking at um 
and following the artists that I look up to. I think even like a peak, like like somebody's working and like there's a shot behind their art. Like it's just there's something about that being a voyeur yeah. and going, oh, they're they're making something super intimate and special that's out of their own heart mm-hmm. and their mind. Yeah, and then you're getting to peek at that in the yeah, I mean, you're a part of it. Awesome, mm-hmm. it's really cool. It's a neat feeling because there hasn't been anything like that before. Really, no, you know, we've never been able to be this kind of like intimate. socially mm-hmm. intimate, really, in that way. That's what I'm hoping the whole revolution is, man. Like when I when you look at everything and like whatever's like whether it's ISIS or whether it's these killings or that or whatever it's like all the all that stuff I feel like through that connection and social media is mm-hmm. really the way that people go oh we're not so dissimilar yeah or maybe you know may, like there's maybe there's other options or maybe my voice is stronger than I thought it was you know because there's other people that echo that voice throughout this this weird thing of the internet yeah I totally agree I mean it just links everybody together and and uh I mean you can fall or find people that have that same voice as you and uh it just builds that bond even stronger. So is is the is the schooling that you've done strictly just been the architecture, and then it's just mm-hmm. all like uh, trial and error of what you you're kind of self directing. Yeah, I guess you would say that. Um, I mean, architecture gave me a good footing um, as far as you know the creative side of uh, creating just everything really, um, and from that. Maybe just uh, you know, just learn to talk to people differently and kind of learn more of a business aspect of it. Yeah. And but I mean, I have no, I didn't do any schooling really in business, and so you know, I've just listened to tons of podcasts on right. different like art marketing and marketing and seeing Are how any I can of them it, valuable. Oh yeah, all of them. But it's really? hard to take in just because there's so much information yeah. sometimes, um, and just reading different books. And it all changes. Yeah. I mean, what was happening eight months ago exactly, yeah. isn't maybe going to be worthwhile today. Mm-hmm. It's such a crazy thing. It's like that's what I say to people that are in school and all that, and they're like, oh, I want to go to school for X, Y, or Z. Mm-hmm. It's going to be changed. What do you want to do with that? Because mm-hmm. maybe it's not valuable at all. Maybe an internship with somebody that's actually moving in that business is the way to go. Because like. I mean, like, I want to be a communications major. I'm like, I don't even know really what that is. Like, that seems like you don't really want to have a job, but you want to pretend like you're going to school so your parents are satisfied. Does that, do I have it right? That sounds about right. I mean, it's like crazy, right? And so then it's like anything else that's out there, unless you want to be a specialized technician of like a doctor, an electrician, like it's maybe not necessary. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's like you where you're letting the the pen and the paper be your teacher and go, I'm not set and throw that one away and like Mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. Yeah. How much of that happens where you start a piece and you're like, fuck this, this isn't it at all? Every day. And you trash it out? Oh, I won't. Well, I mean, uh, it? a lot of the stuff Depends I used to trash. You are. It, all of all of the above. Um, I mean, I'll have, I used to work on paper a lot and I used my hands mostly to do all my rendering. So I would just rip through the layers of paper working it too much. Right. So I would start to throw all those pieces away. My dad would be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, I'll take these. So he so has all those they have that heavy, yeah. heavy art pieces of paper because of that. Yeah, for different mediums Those and, thick, thick. and yeah, some people. I mean, they. I would. I would say they use more, maybe more brushwork, maybe yeah. a little bit less hands-on. Um, but I think you just got to be. I mean, if you're going to be using paper, you got to be careful. The cool thing about using wood as a canvas is that, I mean, not only does the piece have a lot of character before the piece begins. You know, there's not going to be another uh, piece like that. Right. Um, but I can be. You know, rough with it, and I can, if I don't like it, I can sand it down. You know, I can start all the way from scratch. And I've had pieces like that where they'll be sitting around for, you know, a year, and I just like, I just don't quite feel it. And so then I'll come back to it, and I'll just sand, you know, everything off, maybe except for part of the face, and leave that behind kind of as a blueprint of where to start back again. Yeah. Um, That's uh, my friend Julie would do, she would go to places and get old mirrors and get mm-hmm. the frames of them mm-hmm. and just either thrash the glass or whatever and and paint in the mirrors and she yeah. had a lot of portrait work so it came out really mm-hmm. cool looking too but like that kind of thing you know where she could begin again was like really invaluable i think yeah because you don't you it might yeah you don't you don't you don't really know where it's gonna go after it starts and i mean it could be sometimes pieces work f- with you and you know start to finish it'll just everything seems like it goes the right, right way and then some pieces you know might start off well and then you just you just feel lost and like it's not quite working <clears> so do you um do you become uh from start to finish do you ever have like pieces that you don't do frames for or like a lot of your stuff is on on objects mm-hmm. as it were so it's already almost as if a frame is built in or but do you think about that it's just the artwork or like the whole presentation i want it to be like ready to view as it leaves my hands. I think, I mean, you whatever that whole presentation. I think as as it leaves your hands is is important because that's the final lasting image that you're giving of yourself right. in that piece. So, 
Uh, for me, you know, I started off without framing, and I would just, uh, you know, do the clear coat and it drip over the sides, and and that's just how it looked. Right. And then after that, I started painting the sides black, and I was like, oh, that looks cool. Kind of frames it and helps sets it off the wall a little bit. You know, makes it look like a more like in an individual piece. You're kind of yep. it sets itself uh, apart in that way. And then I, you know, recently started framing everything in birch, uh, or sorry, in poplar. And I'll stain it with India ink, which is one of the mediums that I'll use too. Sick. So just using it for like a different, I like using different mediums for different purposes that they're not really intended for. Right. And so, but yeah, back to the framing. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, it really helps set the piece. We're not off, on any timeline. Yeah, you yeah. can say anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think it does. I think it is important for the piece, and you know, I can have piece, old pieces that I'll hold up to uh, newer works, and the frame just helps set it off, sets sets off the work. And uh, with me, when I'll frame it, and then I'll put the final clear coat in it. Yeah. So it has, it, it just, uh, it frames it nicely because it gives it a kind of a, it's like an a edge. Connection. Well, yeah, because that, that clear coat, that edge builds up to the frame. So, you know, it's sealed yeah, in there yeah, for yeah, good. Yeah, it's yeah. a part of the frame as well. It's not just like the frame's not really an afterthought. I love in that. that way. I love it because I see pieces in different ways before and after. That are, mm -hmm. And it's like, it may, to me, it makes such a huge difference. I was thinking if I wanted to have this go and this is like a, got my name on mm -hmm. it, I would want it be like here's how i want it viewed i don't want you to pick a frame kind yeah. of thing you know what i yeah. mean i don't want like because a lot of places or a lot of people that sell art they mm -hmm. just, like here's just the piece of and without a frame i think it's just like you're yeah i've never really, really thought about it that way from the piece in a way but yeah it is kind of a neat way to think about it like okay no all my pieces have this similar aesthetic right right off the bat like i mean if, like mm -hmm. it's noticeable then that's oh that's a david santiago piece mm -hmm. you know like it yeah. becomes that in like you can't say oh you know you don't mm -hmm. you know you don't view that as like oh maybe it's this guy maybe it's that guy it's like no no this whole package this is the way that guy he puts his shit together tight like yeah. this is how it is yeah i never well i appreciate it but i didn't really thought about it but it makes sense that way yeah definitely. i mean I, I was wondering because when i saw your stuff at like the hotel and the, and then online i'm like all these carry this vein and i was and mm -hmm. that's a clear choice that you're making you know mm -hmm. as an artist like it's not something that's like haphazard the like, thoughtless but it's like I, I don't know. I think it's a huge component of it. For yeah. for me, looking at it, I know. I think so. I agree. Um, yeah. But yeah, that is a good way to look at it. You know, kind of, uh, it's related in that way. You can have a whole set or you can, yeah, you can see them, see them elsewhere. Did you, did you look up to people as a young man, as an artist? Or oh did yeah, you, I still you look have up to everybody. <laughs> yeah. When did you st first start, like, the drawing, I would imagine, came first. Like, mm -hmm. there's this little boy that needs an expression and mm -hmm. here's what it is. And then when did it come up with like, ooh, I like the way that guy draws too, or like, or you know, when, when was the first time that things caught your eye, and what were they? Shoot, that's a hard question to answer. Um, maybe, you know, artwork. I just might be off of like deviant places, like deviant art. Right. Um, I think that was a big art community. It still is, uh, but one of the first really big art communities before, um, you know, media sites like Instagram and people were posting on Facebook. Right. Right. Um, so, you know, you can just like kind of lose yourself in that and just, you know, click and just it'll, you know, you'll click one person and it'll lead you to another person with a similar style. So I think that's how you kind of yeah. maybe. Did you, you ever watch like old school cartoon, like heavy metal or uh, like those, they're, they're like old comic mm -hmm. graphic novel kind of deals? Uh, I'm not, it. I never got too much into that. Um, I mean, I was into drawing comic book characters. I like drawing Spider-Man. So Is I was that right? That. Um, but I didn't read too much on the comics or watch too much. Um, uh, like it was more the image, shows, yeah. not the story. Yeah, for me, yeah. maybe, maybe I have a hard time coming up with like a backstory, but I can come up with that like specific, you know, that frame right. of that story. That's if that makes cool, sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, I don't know. I was like it. I like. I don't. I wish I could remember who it was, but there was an artist, and they had their their <clears throat> work, and then beside it, here's a story of what was going like what was going on in their life at the time, mm -hmm. and what this figure entity represented to them and and all uh, it's like it's pretty awesome like, yeah i was forlorn and wrathful about this and mm -hmm. the loss in my life and then this character came out and was like yeah paid homage to this mm -hmm. in some way or something it, yeah it's cool to know that i mean the it's like i think it's like that thing about instagram when you're talking about you know you get a picture of the artist that's painting and working and what mediums are working it's like you get that's a physical mm -hmm. uh, peek into your, but then here's a peek into your real soul about like yeah. what was going on emotionally for me with this piece because it's such a fucking emotional mm -hmm. uh, form. Yeah, you know this this kind of thing, and which isn't which isn't drawn out into a story. It's kind of like a poet that's a good poet that 
leaves a lot of the answers to the reader's mm -hmm. mind instead of spelling it all out as mm -hmm. if everybody's an idiot, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's neat. Yeah. I yeah. Like it. It's endless. It's an endless conversation. Yeah, you can get pretty deep and it can get pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. Are there other uh, things that you'd like to do, like sc sculpting, or uh, has any of that ever caught your eye and you're like, maybe that's the thing I'll try, or, or is it always... Um, you just want to temper and, and get better at the things that you're doing. Why? Well, yeah, no, I want to do so much all the time, and it, you just never feel like you. There aren't enough hours in the day sometimes, you know. Right. And like, I mean, with artwork, you'll do something in one piece, and you'll have an idea like, oh, I got to do that in this next piece, and I want to try that. Oh, but I also want to, you know, build this furniture. I want to make this right. sweet ass shelf, or do this, make this, uh, I don't know, like a bed frame or a couch or something. Um, so you just got to, uh, I don't know, everything. It just kind of like leads to new ideas. You got to pick and choose, I guess, what takes priority and what you're, yeah. what you really want, what you really feel like doing. Um, yeah, so it's never ending. All the projects. Where do you want to be in five years? Like, what do you want your space to look like? What city do you want to be? Like all that. Do you have ideas of that? I love living in Albuquerque. So I mean, I'd love to stay here, and I just need a little bit bigger space. I kind of took over and uh, feel really bad for my ex roommates. Is that right? Yeah. So. Uh, for the time being, it's okay. Um, but yeah, it's hard because uh, I work in a pretty tight space right now. And I'll work on some big pieces and they'll seem huge in that space, you know, and you take them out right. into like a public space. You get them on a big wall. And yeah, a yeah, and you're like, man, this thing is mm. tiny. This doesn't even look anything What's like What's the what biggest I mean. piece that you've worked on? Uh, I think, what is it, four foot by five foot? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a big chunk of... It's large. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's it's fun. Um, I used to work really small, and then I it would you know try to branch out. Okay, I got to work a little bigger, and so I'd do twenty four by twenty four, and that seemed huge to me at the time. It took right. me like a well, especially like months. with the, what you're working on. Mm -hmm. Like if you're working with wood and things like that, that mm -hmm. that is fucking because it's heavy. Because yeah. it's, it's not like a canvas that mm -hmm. you're moving around. That's yeah. like four by eight. Yeah, it's not pieces that. do add up. Um, but yeah, the bigger you work, it's like you can be more expressive. It, excuse me. <clears throat> You can be more expressive, and you can uh, you can really start to stand back from your work yeah. uh, too. So it has, you know, you can interpret it different ways. You can stand back, and it's one piece, and then yeah. it draws you in, so you can get up really close and see all the details, and you get like a different experience from being uh, really personal. With My work friend that way. Uh, uh, Hugo Nonas, he's an artist I know in Venice, and he has an easel, which will tilt all the way down flat, and it mm -hmm. can go up the other. It can go on any. It's like on a a circular mm -hmm. joint so it can be fixed at whatever angle so he's like if i want to work on this way and that way or he mm -hmm. needs it flat if he's working with mm -hmm. uh something that's going to drip and it's it's just cool like yeah, all I the different little toys that are out there but i could see how you would need a huge amount of space to, i mean it, it, it takes up his mm -hmm. whole living room you know it, yeah but that's what it is it's like it takes up the life you yeah. know yeah it's a fun creative clutter yeah like here like yeah, what yeah, you yeah. used to exactly your exactly shop. so i mean that's the thing is that like whatever it is i feel like with with that life it's like it becomes your whole space it's like mm -hmm. you, you like when i'm fighting you can walk into anywhere where i live mm -hmm. and go oh that's what this guy because there's gear strewn yeah. there it's just what it is it's like it or, or whatever that thing is for that person i mean whatever they're mm -hmm. into but it's neat because at the same time you feel really organized almost right because you know everything you is, know where that is like, yeah. Yeah, yeah oh i left those over there to dry and this is over here yeah yeah so all that um, do you do collaborations with anybody ever? Like, do you ever come together and you're like, okay, you do this piece and I'll do that? Or, or there's is it a, a couple tight that are, community uh, like that down here? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, you're starting to see a little bit more uh, collaborative pieces going on. Uh, me and a couple of artists have, uh, I can't say anything about it yet, but we had a cool idea that we we're talking about um, just actually the other night at Holy Cow. Um, but yeah, it's fun. Holy Cow, which is yeah. one of the best places if you want yeah. a burger and oh, fries, so and good. the it's, place to go. Yeah, right on Central in downtown Albuquerque. Um, and that's probably what fueled the great idea. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Um, Do you ever go to his place across the street? Which oh, uh, gravy. Yeah, I've uh, been a couple times. I like Holy Cow better, but I like the inside of gravy, like that old diner feel. Well, I think that's good for like the breakfast, the brunch foods, and so that's what I like to go right, there for. Right, 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 um, right, right. But yeah, Holy Cow's good just to go. You know, we went there what like. Eight nine o'clock, so it's good to hang out, have Delicious. a beer. Delicious, yeah, so good. I just unwind. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what were we saying? <laughs> I don't know. I get lost. Everybody's like, you're not like I. I, I did a I did a, a podcast with this woman that wrote a paleo book one time, and I just like an idea comes in. And I'm like, I would start talking mm -hmm. about that, and then and she's like, she was very uh like she had a 
agenda she wanted to put and mm-hmm. i'm like i'm really not that way. just like whatever comes up like i don't know fucking yeah what the just fuck all these tangents saying. yeah that's the conversation i know right <laughs> that's the thing that people are interested in i think is the conversation not mm-hmm. really the answer so much but how the flow of the conversation is yeah by the way, to all the listeners, his beard is as fierce as his photos. Thank you. So Doesn't much. quite do the justice. Thank you. But I was gonna. I should have done my mustache today. I just <clears> haven't <throat> eaten yet, so I haven't had time. Looks good. I normally eat to get it out of my face. Is the deal? Because otherwise, it comes into my mouth with the food. It's kind of like a like a strainer. It's worse. It's like a sponge. Oh, and no. then yeah, and then <laughs> sometimes all the flavors don't mix well together. David, I'll to be honest. Oh. Anyway, that's maybe too much for for <laughs> listeners. And then we'll I'll, the the this yeah, we, we, Well, then what did you think about the nitrogen, the science fair we had earlier? Oh, it was delicious. Uh, it's like, it's just thick. And, uh, thick, I'm creamy a, goodness? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a beer drinker, and I like stats, and it has that same, you know, that thick, delicious quality to it. So, well, so David at Via Miriam, they do a coffee with a beer. Have you ever had those before? Mm-mm, I haven't had it. Coffee, they, the coffee and a microbrew mixed together. Yeah. This is gonna I'll, see if, I'll see if we can get you some before you go. Yeah, it's happened today. Yeah. Where do people find out more about you and all that stuff? Uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, my handle is St. James, S-T-J-A-M-E. Um, it's my last name, Deconstructed. My last name is Santiago, so I'll let you figure it out from there. <laughs> Websites or anything? Or everything, uh, yeah. Everything's pretty much on Instagram. Mostly on Instagram. Uh, I mean, that's where you can follow along the whole process and find out about upcoming shows. Um, but I also have a website, and I have stuff available uh, for sale there that's uh, S-T-J-A-M-E art dot com st jmart.com great and then if you're in albuquerque they've got your cans at tractor, tractor brewing, brewing yeah right? so you can find those ladies staring back back at you uh on the shelves of uh you know beautiful. jubilation beautiful yeah so go check it out i'm really glad Support you came local. by man thank you so much thank you for having me yeah of course Pleasure. of course this is awesome all right enjoy people be good to each other much love well, I hope you guys all really enjoyed that podcast. I sure did. It was a pleasure to meet him. He's like an instant hero of mine. And as always, Caveman Coffee, bringing you that love. CavemanCoffee.com. You find all your nitro needs. We got my favorite, which is the new Sabretooth Roast, which is just like electric and dark. And when I mix it with goat butter, salt, MCT, I'm like, oh, it's the only thing I want to drink all day long. It's fantastic. I uh, got that. Got some new Pirate Life gear out there, hats, and um, we got some shirts on the way. New beanies out at CavemanCoffee.com. And so check it out. Uh, you can also find us at Caveman Coffee Co. on Instagram because some guy with Caveman Coffee and two pictures of himself drinking coffee has that post. So Caveman Coffee Co. And you can find us on Twitter also. Um, also, NuevoCerveza.com. You can find some great gear, especially if you're local New Mexican. We've got some great Hecho gear and uh, Hecho in Nuevo Mexico. Um, great little microbrew. Check it out. UndisputedFitness.com. If you're in northern New Mexico, Santa Fe, come check us out. Also, the only Caveman Coffee, uh, or the first, rather, Caveman Coffee Cafe in existence. And it occurs right there on 1221 Flagman Way in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And you can get all your favorite roasts and makings. And there's a great peppermint one that they're doing right now for the season, which I had yesterday, which was really fantastic. So check them out, undisputedfitness.com up in Santa Fe. Also, Concrete Cowboy, Austin, Dallas, Houston, wherever you are, we've got you covered in Texas. Greatest place to party in the, in the Southwest, man. It's just incredible. What a vibe. What spirit. Texas has and they bring to the table man every weekend best parties in town Sunday there's nowhere really I'd rather spend my Sunday than sitting at clutch all day Sunday having a breakfast in the morning watching the game all day and all afternoon and then turning into a fucking party at night great DJs great food great service beautiful women it's it's the number one best place to be and some of the coolest dudes ever man like the conversations i get in there are out of this world just fantastic so uh come check us out concrete cowboy and, you, and and search us up on instagram you can find us uh find us there for our austin location uh dan work and carly ranger taking care of that and holding it down and dan's out with double duty busting his ass opening up houston in the next few weeks here on washington you can go check them out over there and give them some love bring them some uh bring them some starbucks even if you want they don't have caveman coffee out there yet but uh that's all happening and in dallas man please believe me rico taylor is holding it down out there 
It is the best night spot I've ever been to in my life, and I've been all over the fucking world. It's really great. So check out Rico, Nolan, little Gene over there behind the bar, just whipping them into shape, man. It's dope. And uh, the best DJs around, DJ Technique over there, DJ Avi. It's really, really, really a great, great place to be. Anyway, Deuce Jim. That's my joint in Venice, man. That's where I love to work out. They got K-Man Coffee on tap there. Uh, great vibe, kind of like the new Muscle Beach of Venice. It's really, really awesome. Really wonderful people running it, owning it. We've got Embo over there, six-foot-tall beauty. You can't even believe that a human looks like that. Logan with his little top knot. He's looking as cute and hipster as ever, holding it down at 220 pounds and learning jujitsu like a stud. We got BirthFit represented, and that mentioned, you know, BirthFit.com, check it out. You know a lady that's pregnant, going to be pregnant, whatever, I would train for that shit like it was the fight of my life, and that's what Lindsay Matthews does. Her and Embo kind of, they run this thing called BirthFit. You can find them on Instagram at BirthFit, or you can find them at, I think it's BirthFit.com. I don't know. I might be wrong about that, but it should be an easy search to find them. And if you're pregnant, thinking about getting pregnant, whatever, do yourself a favor. Get with somebody that's on your side, man, because uh, those ladies are holding it down for before, during, and postpartum, man. And, and it's an awesome thing. If you're looking for overall health and wellness, uh, I would check it out, BirthFit. And Original Nutritionals, if you're not drinking fish oil, you're fucked up in the head. Get your shit together. It'll stop your inflammation. It'll balance out your omegas, give you more energy. It's one of the best supplements that you can take for your body. Quit spending all your money on fucking pills, dummy. Get to OriginalNutritionals.com and check that out. Also, Onnit.com, you guys already know what they are human optimization at its fullest everything you really need in life is over there from weights kettlebells maces all the supplements it's a fucking fantastic place you've heard about it here joe rogan podcast fighter and the kid everybody's everybody out there trying to be better in their life they know about it so get about it also my friend curtis hembroff over there started the first 10th planet austin right at on it uh studios so check them out over there and thank you again very much for listening and remember youtube.com slash c slash tate fletcher you can check out most of these podcasts on youtube as well so you can see how ugly i am in real time all right y'all much love take care of yourself vessels con quesos <laughs>